What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome everybody to another edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and The Record. I'm your host, Art Stapleton, and it is the Thursday before Giants-Jets Battle of Big Apple, the formerly known as the Snoopy Bowl. Of course, Snoopy was fired, just as Todd Bowles and Adam Gaze and... Pat Shermer and Ben McAdoo and Joe Judge, but it's the latest installment. Brian Dable's Giants, Robert Sala's Jets. The Jets have won two of these regular season games in a row over the Giants in 2015 and 2019. Not many players left from that 2015 game, and in 2011, of course, it was the Christmas Eve Game to remember, Giants-Jets, where Victor Cruz danced down the sideline and in the end zone. The curtains came down outside the Giants locker room. Brandon Jacobs and Rex Ryan almost went 12 rounds at midfield. And a whole lot more to this pseudo-rivalry. You know, rivalry is kind of misplaced. You know, the Giants have rivalries with the Eagles and the Cowboys and Washington. You know, the Jets have rivalries with the Patriots, maybe the Dolphins. Well, definitely the Dolphins back in the day, the 80s, uh, no doubt. And then, you know, the Buffalo Bills, eh, not really a rivalry, I would think, from the Jets' perspective. But, you know, this game... As several Giants said yesterday, it's a little bit of a juice game now. Giants got off the schneid, snapped the four-game losing streak. Now they take aim at their co-tenants in MetLife Stadium. The Jets, 3-3, three and three, they soared into their bye week by upsetting the Eagles. And, you know, if you're a Giants fan or you're someone who follows the Giants, you need to give the Jets a lot of respect for upsetting the Eagles the way they did and not because the Eagles lost the game because the Eagles last year lost to Washington at home and then they ended up making it all the way to the Super Bowl and we know how that game ended Kadarius Toney and the Kansas City Chiefs beating James Bradbury and the Eagles in the big game obviously is Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid but you know what KT played his role, so give him credit. Got to know your audience sometimes. And my audience is Giants fans, so I know what you guys are thinking, and I know what you were watching last year when it was the Chiefs and the Eagles. It was basically go Big Red uh, for most, if not all, Giants fans. So what is this game all about? Well, you know, look, both offenses are going to be Uh, Waiting for a big play. I I don't know necessarily if they're going to be able to grind it out against these two defenses. But we'll break down the game a little bit. But I wanted to get to our interviews today. Saquon Barkley and Tay Banks was with a little bit of a group for Saquon Barkley. But I thought the interview was good enough where it was worth putting on the pod today. And... Then I was one-on-one with Deontay Banks, talked to him about his first career interception. If you haven't seen the video, he threw the ball into the stands, knowing where his mom was going to be for a souvenir. Uh, He has seen Garrett Wilson before, back in the spring, when asked who the toughest wide receiver he faced in college was. He said Garrett Wilson, not Marvin Harrison Jr., both of the Ohio State stars but we'll get into that a little bit talk to tay about where he's at as a player has he always been the guy who loves to compete i think you'll enjoy some of the answers from him but first up let's go to saquon barkley you know Brees hall being on the other side it's got to be a little juice for saquon in that 2019 meeting saquon ended up having 
13 carries, one rushing yard, which was the worst game of his career. Statistically, it is, and he admitted before he tore his ACL, it was the worst game that he's dealt with as a professional. So, a lot to prove for Saquon, whose dad, Alibé, is a giant is a Giants fan because of his son, but a Jets fan from birth. Has a Jets tattoo on his arm, if you don't remember that, from when he was drafted, Saquon that is, here. So, Saquon joked about that. And a whole lot more. So let's get to Saquon Barkley, and then we'll come back and tee up the interview with Tay Banks. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, it's a great rivalry. It's, um, it's, always a, it's always a fun game uh, to play against. Um, play a team like that, uh, two teams in the same area, share the same stadium, um, bragging rights for a long time to the next time they see each other. Uh, I'm excited, definitely excited. Uh, for me personally, I didn't really have too, too great a game last time I went against these guys. So um, I'll see that was years, and, years, and, years ago, but I still was having my mind. And I get the opportunity to go out there against a really good team, a really good defense. Um, they're playing really well. They're playing high level. And um, try to continue to get this winning streak going. And is the lowest rushing total you've ever had. So is that something that sits with you a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really don't think about it too much. I was sitting down in my house, and my brother, my little brother definitely reminded me about it. Uh, made a little joke about it. Uh, and that's when I realized, like, dang, I really had one rushing yard against this team. Um, but at that moment, that was probably it was before I ever you know, had an ACL or anything like that. Probably the lowest moment you know, I had as a, as a player. Um, but I, I like how I respond. I think in the next couple of weeks, uh, I played pretty well. And I think I had one of my better games two or three weeks after that. So uh, you learn from it. Um, I'm not the only back that's ever been a part of a game like that. I remember seeing a stat of Barry Sanders in the playoff game having like 16 carries for zero yards. Uh, but like I said, it was years past, a new team. Um, but I'm just excited for the opportunity to go against that team and you know a couple of those guys over there and how competitive they are and how challenging they are, especially on the defense side of the ball. So it's going to be fun. Even years further back, can you remember rooting for the Jets against the Giants as a kid? Uh, yeah, I definitely can remember that. Um, obviously, you know, some people are familiar with my history of being a Jets fan growing up. Uh, my dad being a real big Jets fan, having a Jets tattoo. Um, finally got him to – he's still rooting for the Jets this game, but he hopes, he hopes we win this time. So, uh, I got him to say that out of his own mouth uh, two or three days ago. So I uh, finally got my father on my side. Do you, when you, you've had plenty of games where the running back on the other team has gotten accolades as well. I mean, I think of your battles with, with Zeke and Dallas, and we always talked about, you know, I know you're not going against Brees Hall, but I'm sure you have respect for him as a player. Does that ramp it up anymore for you, knowing that another running back on the field is going to get a lot of attention? Yeah, I mean, you never, you're not technically going against the other running back. You know, I'm not on defense. He's not on defense. I can't stop him. He can't stop me. But anytime you're going against a running back of that caliber, obviously, uh, yes, it increases a little bit more the competitive nature, whether it's a Christian, whether it's a Derrick Henry, whether it's a Brees. And I got nothing but respect for Brees, um, especially, uh, you know, the injury that he, he dealt with. I talked to him a little bit during it. Uh, obviously, we had similar injuries. Um, but the way he's able to respond, um, bounce back after it, and the way he, the level that he's playing with. So tip my hats off to him. He's a great back. And uh, it's going to be fun to see him live in person. Hopefully he don't have uh, as much success he's been having so far in the season. And our defense do what they have to do. And um, uh, I can do what I need to do for offense to help us get a win. Uh, I came a little bit late, so forgive me if you asked this already. But the Jets' defense, you know, what do you make of uh, their play this season? Obviously there were comments preseason about them historically. Uh, what are your thoughts on them so far? Fast, physical, fly to the ball, creates turnovers. Um, they can get to the quarterback. Uh, all three levels, was D line, was some linebackers, was the DBs. Um, they have talented players, so it's gonna be a tough challenge. Um, and they're fun. They're fun to watch. You know, just being a fan of the game, uh, watching film with them. You know, trying to learn them, get ready for them, and seeing the way that they play. You, you got to admire. You got to have some respect for uh, what, what they're doing over there. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a challenge. And as competitors, it's the type of game you want to be a part of. It's like when we were kids. I, I would assume that rivalries were hate these guys, blah blah 
Is it now all about winning? Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I, every game that's the that's the the mindset um, to to come out and win. Uh, every game's important. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and be like, okay, like I, I don't I don't really see I don't have rivalry games in my head. That's not how I really look at it. But I'm not gonna sit here and say like, okay, like it's New York Giants or it's New York Jets. Like you know, it's definitely you know a little more something to the game. Uh, I felt that last time I played in it, um, and, and you know we had a losing in a really close game. But you could just feel the atmosphere, the, the, the fans that were there. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, all you want to do is win. And that's our goal. We want to come out here and, and do what we can. Uh, compete at a high level and come out with a win. It's going to be a tough challenge because they're a really good team over there. A week ago, you guys were still confident that you could turn the season into what you wanted it to, but you still needed that first one. You got that first one now, that first win after the streak. Does it feel any differently in this locker room right now that you guys are ready to turn a corner? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's we're not in here like oh we're five and two. We still understand that we're two and five and we got a long way to go. But I don't think it, we needed the win last week. Uh, I, I think I kind of sat here and said that a game like Buffalo, we feel like we should have won that game. Unfortunately, we came out we didn't win that game. But games like that, uh, going against a really good team in a tough environment, um, can help build a confidence, can help be that spark. And I feel like that's what it was. We, we left a lot on the table last week um, against Washington, who's a really good team. But we found a way to win games, kind of got back to the, the kind of mindset and kind of team we were last year. Um, and that's what we got to continue to do, believe in each other, play common rank football, um, and do whatever it takes, gritty wins, find a way to win games. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. If I say we really didn't have one, I guess we kind of developed one a little bit when I was there. Well, Ohio State, um, Pittsburgh claims they are, I guess. Uh, but uh, um, I don't know. I, I really don't. I really don't feel it out. I, I can't use an example of whether at college. I can tell you the divisional games we play in, whether it's Washington, whether it's Dallas, or whether it's Philly, uh, ups up a little bit. And I can tell you, being part of playoff games, how how much the level increases um, and the speed increases. So. Uh, I expect that to happen this week. Uh, just already, just off the matter of fact of how good they are and how fast they play over there on the defense side of the ball. Um, so it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun opportunity. We gotta go out there and, and be ready because they don't give us the best. The open field touchdown last week. How could you feel? Show you broke the tackle. You come back across the field just to show like you, you have all your abilities back after the injury. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not. I, I know that's all there. Um, I think if you if you watch them, you go. go watch it, everything is all still there. Um, it's still high angle, you know, it's still challenging, but um, you know, I, feel, I feel really comfortable in the game. If you watch like you know, some of my runs, they only might have went for four or five yards, but I feel like I was shifty. I was able to make the cuts that needed to be made, set up the line in a little bit. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, just keep stacking it, keep building off it, um, keep rehabbing it. Um, the better you twist. So that is Saquon Barkley, and like I asked him, if you heard me ask my question about Brees Hall, you know, there's got to be a little bit of a competitive edge for Saquon Barkley going into this weekend. Uh, you know, a lot of talk about Brees Hall and being the home run hitter, and you know, he's kind of what Saquon Barkley was uh, early on in his career. And not that Saquon's a ten year vet, uh, but I think there's a little chip this weekend going in for Saquon to be able to kind of remind people now this is not going to be an easy defense to run against clearly with the jets but uh i think saquon's going to come out with a little chip this weekend so remains to be seen uh how that goes down uh so now let's get over to the rookie corner tay banks was at his locker talked to him on wednesday uh then decided to do our interview today uh so Again, I've been m most impressed by the way Banks is able to go fr from play to play. You know, Wink Martindale joked this summer that, you know, he's like Ted Lasso with the goldfish, the idea of a goldfish memory uh, where you can just forget about one play and move on to the next. So in our interview, you'll hear me ask Tay about, you know, has he always been that way? And he admitted he, he hasn't always been that way. You know, back when... 
early on in his career in 2019 in college when Ohio State wiped the floor with Maryland. In the third quarter, they had already moved on to backups as far as quarterbacks go, and Tay Banks ended up in coverage against Garrett Wilson. And Garrett Wilson scored a 14-yard touchdown pass that Tay has not forgotten. And, you know, it's interesting to see him kind of use that as a backdrop and say he's a much better player now and the reasons why. So uh, one of the better players right now for the Giants is, is Tay Banks and the way he's playing, and he's gone against the gauntlet of receivers in this league right now. He manned up against DK Metcalf, uh, held his own in Miami against those guys. Uh, he saw the guys on opening night against Dallas. And then, obviously, last week, Terry McLaurin and went back and forth with him, trading punch for punch, not literally but figuratively, and then had a huge tackle before the blocked field goal. And then had great coverage on McLaurin on third down that set up the fourth down play by Jason Pennock and the incomplete pass uh, from Sam Howell uh, to Jahan Dotson at the goal line that ended up sealing the win for the Giants. So let's get to Tay Banks, and uh, I'll be back with my final thoughts after the interview. I saw the video after the interception of you chucking the ball into the stands to your mom. Yeah. First off, did you know she was up there? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> so what, uh, in that moment, what made you decide to look for her and put know. it up there? Were you worried that someone else was going to end up with it? No, nah, I really wasn't. Because, I, like, she was with my father and she was with, like, a couple of my people that I'd be with. So it was going to make sure she got the ball. And, uh, like, I don't know. I just wanted to give it to her. It was my first one. How do you rate your arm? Oh, uh, nine out of ten. Cause I missed one row. Like I, I, I was, I threw it up there, but like I threw it to the row right in front of them. So nine out of ten. Let, let's talk about that play a little bit. Um, you know, I know you guys have really been mixing in a lot of different coverages over the last couple of weeks. How much more comfortable are you in what Wink is asking you guys to do on the back end? I mean, we see you. You know, when you're a man up pressing the guy at the line it, it's one thing but in that plane in space in that role how how comfortable were you in that and how sweet did it feel to make I'm, that play? I'm, 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 I'm comfortable playing anything but I just like it's just personally I like playing like a man I just it's just like my mindset but I'm comfortable playing anything and I feel real comfortable playing when when a couple of the guys were getting on you a little bit and finally saying that you finally got that over um, was that a play that you guys have been working on talking about um it was really in practice and they really never throw that. Like I never get it. Like I used to even get them kind of routes in college and I never got it. You feel me? I never got like the, the real three over. I never got the ball thrown. So I'm like when I really seen it thrown, I'm like, he really threw it. <laughs> Cause like I don't never get it. Like I never get it. It's a great time to go get you one. Like, it's a great time to go get you one. So you, know, well, you, you were kinda in you were in a zone, right? In yeah. that situation. Yeah. So I mean in that situation you're not expecting them to come into your zone into your no, no, like it's it's not that I'm not expecting it, but they don't never throw it. Like I already, I, I didn't have that route concept, but a, a few times, especially they go trade tight end, tight end, not tight end, tight to the he tight to the core, and they got three receivers out and three runs are over. It's kind of like they they kind of like that's a it's a known you feel me type concept. So, yep. and they I really I rarely ever get the ball thrown in it. So. When I seen him, I'm like, oh yeah, this Mars. <laughs> uh, t tell me, go back a ways. Your your ascension development a as a corner, not just at this level, but really when you first started playing the position. Oh. Have you always been a guy who loves to compete that way? Would, and even regardless of if I play corner or not, I always want to. I always want to be competing. Like that's just like that's kind of me. Like I like competing. But how do you develop that mentality as a corner? I mean, they always say that amne you need to have amnesia. You need to forget one. Play Play, move on to the next do you look back at when you first started playing a position that you had to learn that lesson that it was hard to move on from one position to the uh, other, one play to the other uh, you kind of like cause you kind you kind of like grow into it because like first time like you like you know you'd be mad when somebody make a play on you so it's like and if you drop like if you drop a pick or something like you just got to forget it like it's kind of like something you grow into for real. um I know you, you said this this spring when you were here you, that the best receiver you've ever faced is Garrett Wilson. I'm sure you're 
studying up and making sure that you know if you get that assignment on Sunday it'll be a different story than the last time you saw him what's he like as a receiver and how excited are you or is that not the right word excited eager real twitch he real, he real yeah he a real twitchy guy like he ready to I mean he real explosive real good real good receiver do you carry in your experience from facing him in college to um, Sunday um, not really but not really carrying it into it but I I am but I'm not like I'm not really but I'm I'm, I'm hyped for the matchup but like you feel me I'm not really worried about like what happened last time you feel me yeah. that's not really what it is did that kind of teach you a lesson last time uh, last time I wasn't the player I was today like I was going off straight athleticism I was I barely was watching film under like I was a real young kid you feel me I had to grow into you feel me? I had to grow up so I different really player was. different yeah I'm different a way time. different way different but it's not even the same type of thing no more I got one Thanks, last man. year that, that time we played in Merlin was we was like three and something we was like three and seven or something like that and they had come they was undefeated it was the number two team in the country they, they had Jay Fields right. Chase Young Dobbins Okuda like they had a team so it's not really the same no more. It's, not, it's not nowhere near the same you looking forward to your first Jets Giants game yeah for sure yeah, gotcha what do you expect uh, good game Great game. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks to Tay Banks. He was heading out with Adoree Jackson, uh, I believe, heading to the weight room a little bit. Uh, so thanks for his time today. Uh, you know, let's talk this, this game a little bit. I think... You know, a lot of people think that it's going to be decided by the defenses, and I would agree with that. Uh, but in terms of offense, I think we're going to end up seeing Tyrod Taylor again. Daniel Jones' status has not changed. So we're going to see Tyrod Taylor, Tommy DeVito as his likely backup. It's the last practice squad elevation for DeVito. So if they're going to have to use him on game day again uh, in uniform, they will have to, after this week, sign him to the 53-man roster. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, last time the Giants played the Jets, the Jets kind of embarrassed them. It was the, the game where Jamal Adams ran through Saquon, who was coming back from an ankle injury, strip sack Daniel Jones, and returned that fumble for a touchdown. Uh, Sterling Shepard today said, you know, yeah, I remember I, I had a concussion. I was not in that game. Uh, the coaches are different. You know, the only coach that's left on either staff is Thomas McGahee, I believe. Uh, so, you know, look, the Giants should have a puncher's chance here to, to win this game. And even though the cha coaches have changed, the Jets haven't won a post buy game since 2015. That's a long time. I know the coaches changed, Todd Bowles, Adam Gaze, and now Robert Sala. But when you acknowledge that, and Sala did by kind of changing things up a little bit, they've lost the last couple of years with Sala as coach after the bye. It's something to keep an eye on. So can the Giants ride the momentum of last week? Now, it wasn't a clean game for them by any stretch. Uh, but I certainly think you can make an argument that, you know, if if Sterling Shepard doesn't muff the punt and if Saquon Barkley doesn't fumble inside the 10, you know, Giants probably win that game 24 nothing. I mean, it's probably that's the way it was. Um, it didn't happen that way. And sometimes when you're a then one and five team, now two and five team, you're not able to put teams away. And that's kind of what the Giants experienced last week. So uh, the big thing for me, I think, is containing Brees Hall. Uh, I think they'll do a pretty good job against Garrett Wilson. I think he's going to get his catches. But uh, Zach Wilson, Giants need Tyrod Taylor to play a clean game again and to outplay Zach Wilson. They need this defense to go after Zach Wilson, uh, and I think they can. It seems like Wink Martindale's got something rolling here right now. Substitution patterns have been good. Guys he's bringing off at the right time are making plays. You know, Jihad Ward comes into sub packages. Uh, Nick McLeod comes in on some sub packages. Trey Hawkins III is coming in on sub packages. <laughs> Isaiah Simmons coming in for some sub packages. The Giants have a flow right now that's working, and I think that works to their advantage this weekend. Now, is the season over if they lose this game? No, of course not. 
but the but at that point at two and six, now you're looking at a situation where you're gonna have to win some games to get back into this uh, and to feel good about yourselves against a team like Dallas. You know, you've got this game and then you've got a game in Vegas against the Raiders. Both are winnable games. Then you have to go down to Dallas. You want to be on a three-game winning streak when you get down there. Uh, and look, there is something to be said about bragging rights, and you're going to hear it. When things aren't going well, the last thing you want to hear is your team, your the other team in the building, in the stadium, and their fans crowing about how good they are and how much better they are than you. I think that's kind of what's at stake. So we'll have our pregame preview show for Sunday morning. Probably get it up on Sunday ni- uh, Saturday night. And then obviously we'll have our postgame pod after the game, uh, analyzing everything that went down and then looking ahead to Las Vegas and that game in, uh, you know, right off the strip. So appreciate you listening as always. We're still all in. We know you're all in, too. We'll talk to you over the weekend.